In this edition of Aston1936.com, I'm going to be talking about what the PCV positive crankcase ventilation system actually does in the car and where it is and why you should care. Um, uh, inside of our engines we have internal combustion and we have those explosions going on and inevitably a little bit of the gases from that combustion leaks past the compression rings and past the valve guides and those fumes would be building up inside the engine uh, crankcase. Well, uh, that's definitely something we don't want to pressurize, right? So what manufacturers used to do in the old days is that they would just literally leave a, a vent pipe open at the top of the engine and just let those gases escape out to the atmosphere. Okay, back then no one cared about the environment, but um, uh, those gases are actually full of all sorts of unspent fuel and they're really um, not a good thing to vent out to the atmosphere. So in, uh, sometime in the late 60s, manufacturers started to uh, burn those gases instead of just letting them vent to the atmosphere. So they'd suck them back into the intake system and just uh, burn them up. So um, that's a pretty easy way to deal with it. And uh, even till today, that's really what the, uh, most manufacturers do. So on our uh, DB9s, we have a fairly sophisticated uh, uh, PCV uh, venting system. And uh, you can't really see much of it. And if you can come in a little closer to see the engine, um, uh, all you can really see are these of it are these really these two crossover pipes. And these attach just behind the throttle bodies, and there's a reason. So uh, these devices here on the left and right are the um, throttle bodies, the butterfly valves that control the airflow into the engine. And a problem that almost all DB9s are suffering from is that if you ever have your throttle body off to change your oil filter, for example, you're going to find probably a little pool of engine oil uh, in laying on the bottom of the plenum inside your air intake. So when you take this off, you'll actually see some engine oil laying in there, a puddle of it, it may even be drooling back out. Um, you'll see it on both sides. Well, uh, most of the forums point to the positive crankcase ventilation valves, this little itty bitty valve, as the culprit. It's made by Ford, back from the era when Aston Martin was owned by Ford. So this particular line here is the suction line. This is the, what sucks the fumes out of the engine. There's one on both sides. And apparently the thought is that it's sucking up oil along with the vapors and then it drops out just as it turns into the uh, air intake plenum here and then the oil pool, pools up. Is this necessarily a bad thing? Well, it looks unsightly of course, we're talking about very, we're talking like a teaspoon amount of oil will be built up in there. But, you know, if you've ever started your DB9 and you've had a puff of blue smoke uh, right at startup, well, maybe you've been sitting on a hill or on a slope and the oil that was pooled here is actually drooled down into the valves and burns off right when you start the car. But now you're thinking, well, what else is wrong with my engine? Uh, so normally it's pretty harmless. Um, Essentially, they tell you you should change your PCV valves whenever you change your coil packs and spark plugs because it's right in the same neighborhood. Um, so we're going to tackle that. So uh, because we can only see these pipes here, this valve is really buried way the hell back under the engine cowl in here. You can't even see it. Um, I'm going to show you on the bench uh, what the different parts of the system, or how the system works, and we can take a look there. So these are the parts that make up uh, the PCV system in the engine. And just to give you a little tour, um, here are the parts we could see. So this was the, um, these are the black plastic pipes that basically linked in behind the uh, throttle bodies. And this is where the suck starts, where it's gonna suck the fumes out. And if we follow these plastic pipes back, they actually come together into this Y pipe and uh, this is called the PCV vacuum harness assembly. And this Y pipe's job is essentially to kind of balance the system. You don't want to have one side sucking harder to, than the other. And so as these things suck back through, you'll actually see right here where both my fingers are pointing, these are the PCV valves. Here's one that's removed, but 
if I take off this hose, so that's where they sit. They actually get embedded between two hose connections. Um, so if you follow this Y pipe back, it connects to essentially these two canisters. And both of these canisters sit in the V of the engine between the two cylinder banks. These are air oil separators. My guess is these are the real culprits of the problem. They're designed to sit right where the two banks of the engines meet. And down below is the crank case and the crankshaft spinning around and all the vapors are down here. Well, these are just literally tin cans or where the vapors uh, get sucked up and there's a gasket here to seal it down to the engine. Um, and the vapors get sucked out by the suction lines that are over here. And there's two of them. One has two in two connections and then the front engine one only has one. So the vapors come out from here. There's a hose that I don't have that connects the two. The vapors get sucked along through this one, more vapors. They go into this Y pipe. They get sucked up these two hoses through the one-way PCV valves, back down and into the throttle bodies and burned in the engine. Um, the, the PCV valve's job is to act as a one-way valve. If there was a backfire in the engine, you wouldn't want the gases coming back down these pipes blowing back into the engine crankcase and popping out your gaskets and things like that. So they're there for a reason. You can actually hear the, the valve rattling around inside. So if you blow on it, you know, so it should be working like a one-way valve for the most part. Um, so there's a little bit more to it. So if you've sucked air out of the crankcase, you have to let fresh air back in, right? So these other stainless steel pipes on the bench here, these are essentially the fresh filtered air inlets. So the manufacturers don't want unfiltered air, you know, maybe there's dust or grit in the air getting into the crankcase where all your bearings and things are. They want air that comes from behind the air filters to get in. So in our cars, if you, um, uh, you've probably never seen these unless you've been changing your oil, but Essentially, there's the big flexible pipe that comes from the air filter up to the throttle bodies. And when you ever have that off, there's a rubber hose that connects to the bottom of it. Well, this is that rubber hose. It's literally the fresh air inlet line that flows along and goes up to another connection at the top of the valve cover. So this is the one for the left size valve cover. Essentially, this set of series of things sucks out air. This lets fresh air go back in up at the top of the valve cover. And there's a similar one uh, it's a little fancier. It's also stainless steel for the right hand bank connects where the air filter um, pipe connects at the throttle body. And uh, uh, it also lets, has a pipe that'll go up and connect to its valve cover. So bad air, uh, gas is sucked out, fresh air allowed in. But one last twist and I'm almost done. The um, uh, vacuum levels inside the throttle bodies uh, vary tremendously whether you're in part throttle or full throttle. When you're in part throttle, there's air just kind of trickling through there. There's actually a high level of vacuum right where these black hoses connect. Um, and the system works great. There's also not that much blow by gas to suck out. But when you've got your foot hard to the floor um, and you're using maximum engine power, those butterflies are wide open and there isn't much vacuum in the intake system anymore. There's actually more vacuum upstream where these fresh air intakes connect. So to be able to get enough air flowing out of the crankcase and to deal with the low vacuum conditions under full throttle, Aston's actually designed a two-stage system. And there's this little extra bit of hose that we can maybe get in for a closer shot. There's a Y pipe on this stainless steel line. So this line, there is no hose attached, was the one that goes up to the valve cover. Well, this line here, comes around and it connects below the right hand PVC valve. It's actually just a straight line. This is the high flow, low vacuum uh, uh, vacuum line. So basically the airflow in this right hand bank pipe changes direction. Instead of bringing fresh air in under full load conditions, this turns out to be the high volume, high flow, sucking it back out. It actually pulls it in ahead of the throttle body um, on the right hand side when you're full on the gas. 
So um, anyways, that's what this little section is over here. Under normal part load operations, it's going through the PCV valves. Under full load, it's bypassing them all together and it's going out this high flow section. And the left hand bank is always providing fresh air no matter what. So those are all the parts that make up uh, the positive crankcase ventilation system in an Aston Martin DB9. In my next video, you're gonna see me actually describe which parts you need to buy if you're gonna service this stuff. I have some cost saving tips, so if you're gonna do this work, I really suggest you watch that video or check out the blog. Um, so as always, uh, please check out aston1936.com down here. Um, and uh, there's more details and diagrams about the Aston Martin uh, manual on how to do this. Uh, please check out this video on how to actually um, uh, buy the parts. Um, as always, if you enjoy the site, please subscribe. And if you have anything to say, please uh, leave a comment down below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.